to her and she said she was in tears she goes thank you she goes she, and to this lady she goes you were praying of ev evidently this lady was bilingual that had heard the woman at the altar she goes you were praying for my family this woman did not know she thought she's praying for her family so that's the revelation this is I mean, it's kind of selfish praying in the spirit, but it's also selfless because we are, it's t the Lord's d taking us on. We can go places we couldn't go just speaking in English because we think we might n n know where we need to go. But when we're praying in other tongues, you know, our tongue's the rudder and you can turn the ship. You might be going in a totally wrong direction, but when you're allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you, he's going to lavushete cause you to to stay on the path and one other thing because uh, i want you because we can't it's like <clears throat> it's so much more effective when we can pray in faith in acts chapter 16 paul was it says there was a woman with a spirit of divination that followed him many days and she was saying all the right things. These are servants of the Most High God who show us the way of salvation. And she just kept after it. And uh, he didn't do anything about it. But she, she was trying to validate herself by connecting with him. So the people would think that, you know, well, Paul's not doing anything about this situation. She must, even though she was like a, a witch or a soothsayer, or a fortune teller so well Paul the great apostle he's not saying anything and she's advertising for him okay well you might have a situation where you're just irritated but you don't know what to do and it's like these are mocking things and circumstances around you but you don't know what to do wait until you know the answers in the spirit so Paul said after many days 
he was grieved and he spoke to the spirit and he commanded it to come out and that woman was delivered of a devil and a great uproar happened she, he took out she was probably one of the kingpins and the people attached to her the kingpins but he did it by the power of the holy spirit under the anointing by revelation and so that's why I'm just going to keep repeating it. we got to move by revelation. The answer's in the Spirit. If you don't know what to do, do what you know to do. If you don't know what to do, do what you know to do. If it's one step of obedience, if it's visiting your neighbor, just a step of obedience, it'll open a door, okay? So right now, we are going to devote the rest of this time to praying in the Holy Spirit. You're welcome to pray here at the altar if you want. I might be walking, so, but you know, you can come up around the altar, you can stand, you can kneel at your chairs, but we're just gonna let the Holy Spirit flow through us and say what he wants to say. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for doors of utterance in the Holy Spirit. Strama shuto mo shete she he she 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 she. We ase kete kete. We agree with you, Lord. We agree with you, Lord. We agree with you, Lord. Hola basete, hola basete. Halavita na shenekete, halavisha na vata nekete, halavisha na kate nekete. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done are doing and are going to do. Shave ve ve. We thank you for the finished work on the cross. Mashe mashe. Mashe mashe. We thank you for paying the price. Sabalavuto doste. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand, Lord, that in due time you exalt us, Lord, the way that you want us exalted. Shave he. Shave he. Far above all principality power, might, and dominion. Mashaneheye, Mashaneheye, Alavulavate, Alavulavate, doors of utterance, Mashinekaya Natai, Damatemotomoto, answers, answers, Mashalevi, Lavita Lave, Lavata Levi, Lavata Leve. Ah, we thank you, Lord, for the better way, the highway of holiness, Masanando. Purity and victory, purity and victory, Pyomo, Shnama, Shneme, Shnamata, 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 Shala Vele Vila Viato, Shala Vila Viato Voto, seated with you, far above all principality, might, and dominion, ruling and reigning in life by one Christ Jesus. Ruling and reigning in life by one Christ Jesus. Asalavuto, Matenekete, Otokoto. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Mashaleve, 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 Madavada Vodavedeve. We thank you for this day, Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest, save now. Nahaya, Nahaya, Nahaya Nalikitai. Nalavutanaje, 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 who was and is and is to come, you are the Holy One. Lavi, 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 la volo, volo, volo. Vola, vala, 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 she. Shuto, 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 Shivanai, Shivanai, Shivanakaitai, Shivanakaitai, Stavanatoko, Padabasteke, Padabaluta, Palamakita, Manamakite, Epete, 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 and there shall be a performance of those things you have heard of the Lord. The word shall no more be prolonged. The word shall no more be prolonged. Mahalikita, Makalakita, Yavakatekita. Not a man that you should lie, Lord. You will make it good like you said you would. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Una pate, una pate, una pate, una pate. Una pate, my ay 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 ay, 
Ramai, ay, 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 ay. Oh, Ravasa Takava Satakur Ravasa Takava Satata. Oh, Ravasa Tata Satata Satatur Ravasa Take. Jave, Jave, Jave. Jave, Jave, Jave. Janatuna, Janatunate. Janatuna, Janatunate. Janatuna, Janatunate. Janatuna, Janatunate. Janatuna, Janatunate. Aleveke, Aleveke. Aleveke, Aleveke. As you're praying, think about the book the Lord has written about you, the things the Lord has decreed and declared about you and for you from the foundations of the world. Understand that as you're praying, it's as if you are bringing those de decrees and declarations of the Lord into this realm. The transaction comes through your mouth. Your mouth, your voice is your address. The Lord needs to hear your voice. If you want to lift up your voice, if you want to sing while these ladies and this team, as they're playing on their instruments, as they're flowing, if you want to sing in the spirit, if you, that's okay. Just don't, you know, drown your neighbor out. But if you want to step out in that song of the Lord, just don't drown your neighbor out. If you, if you feel peace and you're like, why is everybody around me? Just don't they know it's, if it's a place of rest for you, you might've had a breakthrough. So thank the Lord. When you feel that peace or that joy, thank the Lord that whatever he was just praying through you, you've got like the earnest. It's, it's done. There's a rest. And then just say, okay, Lord, is there something else you want me to pray out? Or just worship him, okay? There's an ease in the glory. And we need to just learn to follow the Holy Spirit in prayer. Shave heye, shave heye, shave heye, shave heye, shave heye, javula elevita numo kuramahasai, shamor ramahasa mokorai. You are welcome, Lord. We are, we are welcome with you. Thank you, Lord, that you've brought us through. Shahalaneke. Shaha ha hey, this is the day. Shile, 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 no more delay. Alaviamo shamai, alavuma la matekia noto, alavokor ravase. Oh, sokoso, this Lord is our happy place, face to face. Masina na 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 ya na na nae, masanina ya na 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 ya na nae. Obeke keke, o keke pe pe pe, o pe 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 pe, o pe obe obe, a pe a pe a pe, obe obe obe, obe away, a be he, a be he ye, a be he ye, mahaya hai, mono muramase, oramamamasai, o makia makoro bubushte. Ora ba 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 busha ba 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 so kora ba 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 se. Ora ba 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 se kiriaso. Usanande. If you need to close your eyes so you're not distracted, just do that. Focus in. Shama tamai je. Ushanate shoto yoto itakate esekete. O te ke 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 he ye e he can a nation sebe be born in a day? Yes, 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 yes. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. With joy, with joy, draw from the wells of salvation. With joy, with joy. 
Vishtave kere ve shenombo Rambian de 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 bo de be de bi de aba de bi de amando borra mama se Orra mama maso morra mama maso Orra mama maso morra mama maso Oh fresh fire shave 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 Sovo tongues of fire tongues of fire Tongues of Otamash demande be da ba da bo da ba da ba da bo da bo ra ba 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 so kur ra ba ba se ashna hinda 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 kur ra ba ba se or ra ba sa kari ato or ro kuto evo ite she she or re he 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 we agree ha 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 we agree Lord ha 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 wo te ne we say yes. We say yes, we say yes, we will yield to you. Hamata mokuya mahaya mahaya mahorra mase. Oreshe, oreshe. All together lovely. Horre ve ye ye ye. Sumotomo sumo horimatai. Orimata mata morra mase. Orra ba 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 la borra ba 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 buso tokoso. Orra ba 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 bokuso bokoso koso koso. Orra ba 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 so koso koso koso. Orra ba 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 shete. Sororra ba 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 sorokorra ba 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 se. Orra ba 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 se karabariato. Hallelujah. Now we're going to go a little bit further. I'm just saying this because we're it's a corporate gathering here and we all want to go in together. So it's good to check in every now and then with the Holy Spirit. And um, it's okay. We can go a little bit further. So we're just going to continue. It's about a relationship. So we're, it's a partnership. It's our spirit with, his, with the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity is flowing through us with our spirit together. And there's a word called ex nihilo. And so you might not know that there might be something that never been before is been now. Shahe ya tuna shnehe shupote neke kuyabokoste suboroboriate iriato uriate keriate kiriate I'm not afraid if you guys like get uh you know just don't drown me out but you worship team I mean if you get I know you need to you need to blast some stuff out sometimes and if you hold back you're hindering us we need you to break through. I know there's an anointing on that guitar that there's sometimes there's like a resistance in the spirit. Just like she speaks it, you play it. Okay? So I give you permission like right now if you're feeling that flow, if there's like something that's been buffeting you all weekend, just go ahead and take it out. I have no problem with that, okay? <laughs> all right. And then you're you know it's, it's going to go on Caesar too. It's going to cuz he's going to that uh, is going to be caught by Caesar. Okay? All righty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this precious team. So thankful for them. Shalahila Viano Tonoto. Ida Bada Vede Vidiato. Kuriata Kiriata Kasese. Shorani Kiana Korani Kiana Korani Kiana Korani Kisata Sator Rababase. Holy, holy, holy. Okay, let's do it this way. I'm going to let you guys, Miss Brittany, I'm going to let you guys take over, but... We're doing it in tongues. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna disconnect from our minds. We're gonna you guys can sing in this in the spirit in other tongues because we're praying out the mysteries. 
Okay, and that's this is pre-service prayer. Yep. And then, you know, the words you get, you'll have another time to pray, yep. sing them out. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to just kind of like yield to these a little bit. I'm still going to be praying, but we're going to let them, um, if they get, if they have an utterance in tongues, they can sing it out. Go for it, Julie. Sing the sing it out. Sing in tongues. Show them from your innermost being, that restored, healed, beautiful place the Lord has created in you. Synchronizing all of us. Synchronization. Shave ve ve she. Okay, as Julie's singing in the spirit, Brittany, can you guys harmonize together in the spirit? Let the let the Lord give you the song. Sing it in the spirit. 
and then as they as they begin to harmonize and sing in the spirit together i want all of us to join in with them you don't have to know how to sing but your spirit will go there so they're going to let the holy spirit tell them the the whatever key whatever you guys need to do to get in that flow and then we're just going to follow you guys and we're going to all have that sound of heaven together one sound one voice
Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, shede ke shokoshte. Shorokoshte. We just seal this time in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Oh, shadia, shday, shday, shday. Shday, shay, shay, shay. Shay, 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 shay. Shay, 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 shay. Shay, 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 shay. shay. Shulava sakiriasto. Sokoreshte. So, shamate she. We're so moste, ishte, ashte. We're so thankful, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord. And we're so thankful. And we're going to come back to this place again, all of us together. We're going to, this is going to be more and more more and more and more just where we go and we're all growing together so we're gonna stay hooked up and we're gonna come back and just kind of stay in this flow we're gonna um, have a few announcements and things but those can be anointed too you know you can just stay hooked up and then we're going to have a beautiful service today, and the Lord's going to have his way. The Word and the Spirit are going to have free course, and the Word and the Spirit, they agree. The Word and the Spirit, they agree. Jesus is the Word, and the Spirit agrees, and the angels hearken to the voice of the Word of the Lord. They work with us. And God works with us, confirming his word with signs and wonders following. So we can expect that as the word goes out. You can expect answers today in the service. You can expect interpretation of everything that was prayed out this morning throughout the coming days. And you can expect an increase in your own personal private prayer time. It's like the Hebrides revival. They said that, that it was so dark. People had no regard for their soul. But there was one little prayer meeting. And they're getting ready to shut it down because it was harvest time and the men, people needed to be gathering in the harvest. <clears throat> so that night the pastor was going to shut it down, but the little lady that was given the testimony with her cute little accent, she said, somehow, <clears throat> he just couldn't shut it down. And it, it grew, it went on. And then <clears throat> the testimony is that the lights in the homes in the middle of the night would be on more and more and more. The fire of God was in those homes, and that's what I know is going to happen to all of us. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. I know it. I know it. It's not, it's a passion, but it's not from me. It's from the Lord that all across our nation, all across this world, there's going to be more lights in more houses, brighter and brighter and brighter, brighter and brighter and brighter. When you're up in the middle of the night praying, you're not alone. You got brothers and sisters around the world, their lights on their house, in their house. There's brighter and brighter, more and more. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter until the final day. That's our inheritance, brighter and brighter. Okay, so we love his appearing. And when he says, will I find faith when I come back? Well, let it, yes be our answer. You will find faith. So, La Shoto and praying in other tongues, building ourselves up on our most holy faith, keeping ourselves in the love of God. Love is our safe place. Love is our security. 
God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. And that's a really good place to be. Shakuro shte shete. Soto shenikite shekete. Sukoro kudia shtekidia shte. So we're just sort of hovering here until Pastor Mike and Pastor Ryan are ready. Shalavuna kareya shenikidia te. But it's good to kind of be comfortable with the quiet places too. There's ebbs and flows in the spirit. Shanahaya shenono shenono no she. Shonono no she kidia shte. Thank you, Father. Okay, so you all, we get to, you guys get to worship a little bit. So go ahead and seal it in with, and like if you just, just kind of listen to your spirit. Like if there was some songs just now the Lord was giving you, just go for it. Because those are going to have like an anointing on them. Okay, love y'all.
Standing in 
Lord, we thank you for the promise that says when we do hunger and thirst for you and for righteousness, that we will be filled. Not might, but we will be filled. I thank you, Lord, for filling us to overflowing. I thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us to live in the abundant blessing of heaven, to encounter your presence, to experience your heart in every area of our lives, Lord. We thank you for your beautiful presence. We thank you that you're with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Yeah, amen. You know, I love the promises of the Bible where it says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. They shall be filled. Amen. So if you're not getting filled, just get in there and hunger and thirst and say, Lord, give me all you got. Don't hold back. Amen. Are you happy to be here this morning? All right. I was watching from my window, all you, all you coming in, and uh, I just, in fact, as we sing that, I just appreciated watching, you know, you just feel the hunger uh, of here in Tulsa and from you, and I know you, uh, uh, you're hungry for whatever God has in store, and, uh, but how many of you have ch been changed already? I mean, come on. This is uh, the last uh, service um, here in Tulsa until we come back next year. And so we're excited about all that God's doing. So uh, a couple announcements. We do need some volunteers to help pick up at the end. And uh, so if we men, women, uh, children, doesn't matter. We just need help. So these right here, these simulators got to go back downstairs uh, with all the other stuff. And uh, we put it on pallets and we bring it down and put it on Warrior Truck. It's a good opportunity to see Warrior Truck. It's all wrapped and it's really cool truck. So if you want to see the truck, you got to lift a box. So uh, and don't cheat and go out there and just look at the truck anyway. But uh, go out there and look at the uh, truck. Uh, but help us out if you would at the end. Right at the end, just go to the back and uh, they'll show you what to do. And we have uh, some food. Pastor Sixto is going to uh, be back there with some of the food that we have left over as well. Also, uh, we always like to, whenever we grab the microphone, we always re like to remind everybody uh, of the places we're going. Uh, so we're going to be in Virginia Beach next and then uh, Pennsylvania. And then we're going to do, be doing a whole bunch of one-nighters coming up. So be watching for that. So uh, please uh, visit the events page. And uh, people are, are always asking, when are you going to come here? When are you going to come there? And it's all on the events page. So please uh, uh, look at that. So. Um, it, it's uh, sometimes uh, Kevin and Kathy, they have it on their heart to do like a double blessing in a meeting. And uh, so, and I was telling Kevin a minute ago, I always get the privilege of presenting the blessing. It's, uh, I get the side benefit. And uh, just to reiterate, in case you didn't hear, and plus you need to know anyway, because it's a good teaching that with all that Kevin and Kathy do, and it's, and it's amazing, you, you, you don't even know the half of it, seriously. Uh, 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 what they do in the ministry. They're constantly writing, constantly uh, doing CDs and, and books and all that. He'll, he'll you know, uh, fly out of here today and then tomorrow he'll be, he'll, he's going to be like, well, you know, I'm working on this, I'm working on that, you know, just after a conference. So um, in the midst of all that, the Lord said to him to go use uh, the plane for chartering and, and flying people around and, you know, which they pay to do. And, and uh, but Kevin's the pilot. And so uh, the Lord told him that with that, off, with that money that you receive, I want you to uh, give it away to single moms and, and widows and that so, so on and so forth. And we already did that here, but the Lord spoke to him to do it again. And uh, so Tiffany Henry, if you come up, um, come on up. I grew up in a single mom. Uh, my mom, my dad, dad was young, so I can't get through this ever without crying. So we want to bless Tiffany this morning with, a, with her, uh, Kevin's personal salary. So... <laughs> You're welcome. God bless you. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Just that uh, I want to reiterate that that comes from uh, their personal uh, finances. Uh, so, you know, if, if they can do it uh, and I can do it and you can do it, let, let's let's do that. Let's live like that. Amen. Well, let's take an offering before Pastor Mike comes. If you're making out a check, you can make it out to Warrior Notes Ministry. And online right now, you can do text to give. You can do text to give in here if you want it. It's on the envelope. But we certainly appreciate everybody uh, that's giving. And uh, 
I tell you what, I'm making all these announcements. A lot of times I'll feel the power of God up here and you just want to keep going on and on, but it's not, it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. But I tell you, I felt the power of God when I just handed her that check from Kevin. And so, you know, God's all into stuff like that. And like Kevin has said, you know, we want to, we want to bless people uh, that, that can't pay us back. It's easy to give something to somebody where, you know, they can maybe give you something back one day, but to bless children and widows and orphans and single moms, single dads, uh, without any expectation, uh, that's a real gift. Uh, and the Lord looks on that very kindly. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, that we truly have learned to be cheerful givers. We don't want to have this ungodly, word, worldly tight grip on our money. I'll give it when I'll give it. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that may money just flow through us like water. Lord, to bless people, to bless bless the, uh, the kingdom, bless those who don't have what we have. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, ushers. Well, good morning, church. I'll tell you what, I, uh, it amazes me how much God can do in just a moment, in just a, a few hours in a weekend. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of beautiful people out there that go years and years and years and never experience the presence, the glory, the healing, the transformation. And so it's a, it's a very precious thing when the Holy Spirit comes. And so we're so thankful for him. And we're also so thankful for you guys because, you know, if it wasn't for the partners and volunteers and the students and all you guys that not just help maybe even financially, but you're praying and you're packing boxes and you're helping with food and you're taking courses and you're hosting fellowships. It, you guys are the ones that are carrying this into your life and your community because it's, it's about a people that say yes. And if you don't say yes, then there's things in the kingdom that go undone. And so it's such a privilege to have everybody here. So partners, thank you for making this possible. If you're watching online, you know, we have, uh, Kevin Kathy have a lot of partners overseas. And, uh, you know, they're, it, they're so precious. And because, you know, everywhere from the UK to Australia to Canada and all these countries, you know, your Warrior Notes family. And I just want to take a moment and honor you, even all those that are online that, you know, uh, that haven't been able to make it to a conference you guys are such precious family and uh, we're so thankful because we can make a difference. We can change a generation if we stand in unity and we say that we're not going to put up with stuff. We vote, we, we hand out food, we disciple people, we win the loss, we cast out devils. We aren't those that just are clouds without rain like Kevin says all the time, but when the cloud comes and it's a warrior note cloud, I guarantee something there's going to be some rain coming down. <laughs> but you have to receive it before you give it, right? So we're so thankful. So listen, we have uh, cards left in the back for half off courses. There is your study guide. I encourage you to take that study guide. You know, uh, if you're married, go through it with your spouse. Go through it with your kids. Go through it with your church groups. Go through it. Find a, a camp of homeless people and say, hey, I've come to bring food and to disciple you. And they might think you're crazy, but after a little bit, they're going to realize you're the real deal. <laughs> right? So take the resources that are being given to you and then begin to take action with it. And I know we say that a lot, but, you know, we keep forgetting that the Great Commission was the word go, not stay, not just pontificate and stare at the ceiling and hope that the rain comes. No, be the rain, be the hands and feet, right? Wherever your church is, wherever your community is, go for it, go for it, go for it. And so I want to also just throw a few other things for you guys. We're so excited because we're, we're, we've got some home, we got our first set of homeschooling our kindergarten at the publishers waiting for that to come out and this homeschool team's been working so hard and you're gonna see a flow because right behind it's gonna be first grade then second grade and if because I helped do nothing with kindergarten I also learned that after second grade comes third grade and then comes fourth grade 
I applied and they said that I was not qualified. But um, anyways, I'm working on that. So we have our first graduation coming up for the Warrior Notes School of Ministry students. I'm telling you, it's going to be live on the air for the world to see. Kevin and Kathy want to honor these students. And it's going to be incredible. So I want to encourage you, if you're watching online or if you're here, it, you know, it takes 60 credit hours to get your associates. So if, you, if you're in the 30 credit hour, you're, you've got 40 credit hours, I want you to hit the gas. Because I would love to see you at that first graduation. It's going to be incredible. It's absolutely going to be incredible. So you guys are special, you're precious, and you have to know there's destiny inside of you. So take the courses, take the resources, take all these things, and begin to unlock the things that are inside of you so you can change a generation. Amen? Amen. Dr. Kevin, say, oh, Pastor Ryan. <laughs> Help me out, Mike. Uh, Kevin wanted to give, do some more giveaways as if he hasn't already. So um, he wrote a book, You Can Hear God's Voice. And like I said the other day, I've read all his stuff and this is powerful. And it sums up a lot of what he was saying uh, uh, this weekend and much, much more. So that book, and then he's got a CD set, two CD set teaching, uh, You Can Hear God's Voice, uh, teaching prayers and impartation. So who wants this set right here? All right, Brooke and Jessica, if you could help us out. Who, somebody on this side? Okay. All right. Well, it should be together, Mike. The book is set together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, real quick. Kevin's going to need to come up. Okay, we have some coins. We have some of these special coins uh, that Kevin's... Uh, and Kathy have designed for the ministry. So what... They're all different, though, Mike. What are they... At? Well, the Warrior Missions. Who wants Warrior Missions so you can hold the coin and pray? Yeah. All right, what's the next one? So the next one is going to be the pantry. The food pantry ministry. Who wants that? It's right, okay. All right, what's the next one, Mike? Uh, next one is... <laughs> <laughs> All right, another missions. Who wants to pray for missions and, and the food pantry? I'm telling you, uh, uh, through Pastor Sixto and Susan and what, what they've uh, uh, talking behind the scenes with Kevin and Kathy, the food ministry is just getting started, right? It, it's just barely scratching the surface of what, uh, not at liberty to say right now, but the things that Kevin wants to do at these conferences are mind-blowing down the road. Amen? Let's welcome Dr. Kevin Zadai. You're welcome. You're welcome. This is fun. This is retirement. <laughs> Retirement's fun. We were so excited when Kathy and I got to retire, um, and we were sitting in the living room, and we were praying, and the Lord told us, okay, I want to tell you what retire means. It means go get new tires on your car and hit the road. <laughs> so we got retired. We didn't know. The... To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, um, there are times where I think I would rather go back to Southwest Airlines to, to just to rest, because it, <laughs> it's quite, a, it's quite a schedule. Um, anyway, um, I hope you all have enjoyed this weekend, and the, and um, you can give the Lord all the credit because you know He. He, he wants habitation. He wants, to, he wants to abide with us. And um, it's not been easy for me to not do what everybody else is doing. But see, it's turned into a circus. It's like a three-ring circus with, these, with some of these services and stuff. And so, uh, not ours. But I just, I just resist going back to that mode anymore. Because if I don't, um, if I'm not disciplined and I don't make you disciplined that we can never get into the corporate anointing where it's always going to be these individuals and it's going to be uh, pulling people out and then you're wishing you could get called out and you know 98% of you are not going to get called out because and it's the same way with the prayer uh, you you might you might get touched and you might not get touched 
And I haven't, you know, I don't know about you, but I haven't figured out why some do and some don't. You know, it's, but you, you pray for four or five hours for people. And, you know, and what happens is, is a, a couple people fall under the power and then the rest of them are pushed. And I'm just, you got to be kidding me. You know, that's why don't we just bring in the smoke machines and the light show too, because, you know, if, you're, if the glory's not there, then you're going to have to fake it. And so anyway, I just want to tell you that my heart is, is it, that I, I'm willing to wait as long as it takes for us to get to the place where as a corporate body, wherever we're at, that the glory cloud comes in and nobody, nobody can stand. And no one will be, get credit for it. It won't be a man or a woman. It'll be all of you laid out pushing your little red button saying, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> and that's what I want. I want, I want the Father to get glorified. Yes. And um, it's just time to bring the attention back to, to the simple things that, that, that I started out with in my Christianity was God showed up in my room and there was no offering. There was nothing. There was nobody blowing on me except God himself. And Nobody laying hands on me. It was just me and God in my room, and, and I repented of my sins, and I'm not going to hell now. And, you know, I should have got that in church. I was tithing, and they took my money, but they didn't give me, <laughs> but they didn't give me the message. You all get this. So, anyway, thank you for, all, for coming, but just understand that, you know, it'd be easy for me to just pull you out and prophesy over you and, you know, pray over you, and you can form a line here and fire tunnel over here. And, but, but the thing of it is, if you don't walk in this, you're really not helping anybody. You got to walk in it, which is a big step. You got to get rid of, you got to put your big, big boy clothes on, you know, <coughs> become an adult. And um, so anyway, um, I'm being very patient because, like I said, there, I've seen the manifestation of the Lord. I mean, I, 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 just, I could just tell you, like, like I was standing up here in Australia not that long ago. And it was a huge church, and I remember the power of God just like this, just like this, but just picture like, you know, a couple thousand people. And I watched this family come in late, and they uh, all line up against the wall because there's no seats left. And I'm thinking, people came to hear what I have to say. I'm thinking like, I just traveled 25 hours on an airplane and I, it was like, it felt like two days. And these people are standing against the wall and, if, and the Lord said, I saw an angel, I saw another person, it was, there was five, five or six people in that family. And then I saw another man stand beside them, but it was an angel. And um, the angel was going like this and pointing at them, but they couldn't see it. And he kept pointing at him. And I, I'm like, you know, just like this, I'm like, I look away and I'm like, to see if, it, if I'm, you know. And then the Lord said to me, that family, that family just, just traveled to, uh, to, for you to confirm to them. So this is what you say, thus saith the Lord. That the, that, and he said that you confirm their ministry and that they're on the right track. And you confirm that today that I'm placing them in the ministry, and this is the confirmation you asked for this morning at the breakfast table. Okay, so I said that. And so they, I, I called them up. The power of God hit them halfway up. They started falling. And when they got up here, I just I prophesied to them, just like right now, before we, you know, and um, found out that they were in the other side of Australia, which it was like a four-hour flight, it wouldn't have been on my airplane a four-hour flight, but I mean, I don't know what they were flying. Dear Lord, that is a long time, but that, that's a big country. Anyway, they were sitting at the breakfast table, and uh, they said, you know, what are we doing? We know we've been called to the ministry. We got these little kids. We, we got we to we do whatever God wants us to do. Let's just, believe, let's just go on an airplane right now to Kevin Zadai's meeting. So they went the whole way across the country, the whole family on an airplane, got there, got there late, 
They said, let's just believe that God will call us out and confirm it. And, um, you know, there's people watching Australia right now, and you'll see on the comments, I was in that meeting. <laughs> that you watch the comments, they'll say, I was in that meeting, he's telling you the truth. Okay, so that is the way I believe that it should be. But it should be a corporate thing. And it should be a sign to everyone else. It shouldn't be something like, well, why didn't he call me out? And um, so... Anyway, it's always hard when someone comes in and, and really enforces what, what's righteous. Those people always get the bad, you know, they, they get the bad deal. They're celebrated in the next generation as heroes. But they, people want to kill them during the time they're alive. Because see, what happens is, is you, you, you take a stand for what's right. And if something's wrong and we've gotten off, it's, nobody wants that person to say anything if, if it's going to ruin the party. So that's why I did the, the reverse offering. I've been waiting two years to do the reverse offering. I picked the smallest venue, which was Pennsylvania, which was my home, home, hometown, and the Lord wouldn't let me do it there. And he said, you're doing it in Dalton. I go, Lord, there's 2,000 people registered there. So I told Kathy, we had to go to different banks in Dalton to get, an, to get, to get enough of the money that we needed in the, in the $20 denominations and to give, just to pass it out. And the reason I did that is because we've gotten off. And that was out of our own money. And somebody actually came up, one of our sponsors came up and said, you know, I'm doubling down. Whatever you do, I'm doing too. But don't tell anybody. So I said, okay. We couldn't give it all away. It was $10,000. Couldn't give it away. We had to give it to the kids. They take it. Okay, so I read chapter 8 of 2 Corinthians where that's what they did. They, they asked all the people that, that it says that Paul said, those who are being prospered right now by the Lord at this time, give into the offering so that those that are in the congregation that are having trouble right now, could, it could be distributed to them so there would be equality. But see, you, no one ever preaches out of that chapter. But you get the next chapter talks about, you know, we, God loves a cheerful giver and you shouldn't give out a compulsion. But they also neglect the fact that Paul said, take the offering before I come. So that nobody, there's no arm pulling, you know. Okay, so here, here's the thing. Ananias and Sapphira were judged, which is not taught, but they were judged in a church service right after the baptisms, the baby baptisms, and then, um, then, then they had the offering. And when they brought that up, that was what they were doing. They were, they were supposed to sell portions of their, of their assets if they were wealthy, in order to distribute it to the poor in, within the congregation. And I thought I had a lot of enemies. But it's just going to increase, because what happens is, is that money was never supposed to leave the building. It's supposed to be distributed among the poor. So when Ananias and Sapphira did what they did, they didn't have to do anything. But when they did it, they made it look like it was all going to that offering. So they lied when they didn't have to lie. And they were, they were judged. Now, who killed them? <laughs> I mean, who killed Moses? Moses. He was perfectly in good health, and God said, you're done. You're not going in. And he, it says he died before the Lord. Well, Ananias and Sapphira was in a church service. So anyway, 
this always goes over well. That's why I never talk about it. But I'm, I'm talking about because I'm trying to tell you something here is that all of you are important and we're all important to each other. That's right. But what we have inside of us is treasure that each one of us need to share with each other. But however, if, if someone's going through a hard time, it doesn't mean that they did anything wrong. Right. It's a broken world. If you're sick, you might not have done anything wrong. It's a broken world, and the devil's a mean devil. He doesn't, he doesn't um, lose sleep over you at night. He doesn't sleep, and his time is short. So uh, a, lo a lot of times we sympathize with the enemy, and thus we, we allow things to happen, and then we wonder, like, why did they even allow those machines anyway? Texas wouldn't. <laughs> Texas didn't allow them. Okay, so we, we, we allow things, but it, it's, not, it's not always obvious. But see, when God did what he did there in the church, it was instant judgment. And, and it's, a lot of those things that happened in the early church, it says a great fear fell upon the city and the church when Ananias and Sapphira died. It said, it said the fear of the Lord fell upon the city and the, and the... Well, I thought we were supposed to have the fear of the Lord anyway. Okay, so you understand that things will default eventually, but it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to run into a wall. You don't have to learn the hard way. Okay? Everybody hear me? So there's a lot of people that have already proven that God is faithful and he's a good God. And so it's not really necessary for you to focus on anything but a good God who loves you and forgives you and wants the best for you. But in a broken world, the key here is that you're going to have to have intervention, supernatural intervention daily in order to supersede or overcome what the devil has power to do. He has authority because it was given to him by Adam and Eve. But he doesn't have authority over a Christian. And, and, you know, people will say, oh, I would, you know, they've been telling me for years and years and years, oh, I wouldn't talk about the devil like that because you're, you're going to get targeted. But see, like right now, I can hear some, like, mumbling under my feet. I heard a crunch. <laughs> and, then, and then I hear mumbling. But serpents and scorpions are to be trampled on. Yes. They, ha they have no other use. Honestly, okay? So if I back off, then you're going to back off. But see, what has happened in this generation has happens in all the generations, it, which is why we have to have, which, which is a default revival. We have to have a default, which is called revival. A, a, li a live person doesn't need revived. They need slapped. <laughs> no, no, think about it. I, I need slapped sometimes. I don't need revived. I'm not dead. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm maybe asleep or I'm, I'm dull. But you know what that's from? That's from dull preaching. No, no, I'm serious. I am a product of how I was preached to or the lack thereof. Okay, so in a, in a generation, if someone backs off, well, that if, if, if they back off, then the whole all of Israel backs off. And then you have all the terrible things that are happening to Israel, and the prophets were sent to speak to them. But they didn't repent. And so even worse things happened. Think about it. You know, I don't, I don't go to Ezekiel to get encouraged. I don't, I don't read Job to get encouraged. These are things that I, I take note, don't do these things. I don't, you know, 
I read about the mountaintop where God showed Moses his glory. But, you know, the rest of the, of the, the situation in the desert, I, I ain't going there. You know, I, I'm, I'm skipping that. I've, I've learned, but I can learn from other people's mistakes. Okay, so how, how, we, how, we, how we navigate through this life is by having strong people that have, have a strong message. Because I don't want you to just make it through another day. I want you to make the devil wish you would shut up. I want you to make it so that the devil wants to give up. The only way is to become like Jesus. Jesus said he's coming, but he has nothing in me. So that is the key to the fivefold, is to seal it up so that the body is completely uh, fortified and energized with the Holy Spirit and also has been given the proper weapons and tools to use at any one moment, any, any, any situation. And, and so if I would go back and just do what everyone else is doing, then what you're going to get is what everyone else is getting, which is, which is not much at all, cold snack. But if you want the fire from the altar, you're going to have to preach on the blood. You're going to have to preach on the name of Jesus. You're going to have to talk about repentance and um, brokenness and humility. And you're going to have to talk from the other realm. So anyway, I feel better now that I've told you this. Because in, 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 every, in every generation, someone has to say, you know what? We're wrong. We're off. We passed this 7-Eleven, we're lost. We passed this 7-Eleven for every year for the last 40 years. Somebody needs to man it up and pull over. You know, and it's like me, give me that map. And I look at it and it expired years ago. It expired. It's, there's, no, there, there, there's no updated version. And... And here the Lord is saying to us right now, it's time to grow up. It's time to mature and say, listen, there is no new revelation coming. There is no interpretation of what's happening in Ukraine. It's called a mean devil that causes war. The devil's on the ground. That means he's got his paws on the ground. He's come down and walking among us when people start dying like that. Yeah. When, you, were, when you're, you got Russian soldiers fighting their own neighborhoods they grew up in, telling grandma she's got to go. That's why they're bailing. They're getting out of their tanks and they're, they're weeping and they're being interviewed. And they're, they're deserting because they're like, we don't even agree with this. Yeah. You're not going to get that on the media, you're going to get that from people that have a cell phone. Okay? Right? So you all want to mature and grow up. And I, 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 everything that I do, every, every time I speak, like right now, I prepare myself. I've been up for a long time. I've been up a, a long time today. And I still have to fly out of here. I still have to fly me and my wife home. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to film for our school. Andrew, <laughs> be, be ready. Oh, I don't know. Wait a minute. Are you going to even be home? Okay. <laughs> but everything I do is, 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 a, is a step forward from where you are. I want to encourage you to keep moving and, and, and coming into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and, and getting sound doctrine that the devil fears, which is things like humility and brokenness and repentance. The, all these things that built the church, the, the apostles built the church on these, the foundation of these things, where Paul said, listen, I can fix what's going on in the church 
if you'll just come to the table and discern the Lord's body, he said, you won't die early. You won't be sick and weak. I can just fix it. You don't need to go to a doctor. Just discern the Lord's body. Start to honor the Lord. And the other thing is you're compromised in your congregation. So turn that one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his soul may be saved in that day. See, Paul was an apostle, and he, 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 he knew how to fix things, but it offends people. So how would you like to get a letter from Paul saying, you know what, I wish I could address you as spiritual, but you're carnal. That's chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, verse 1. I wish I could address you as spiritual. Wait, Paul, we, we line up with words of wisdom here, words of knowledge here, tongues, interpretation of tongues. I mean, they were spiritual, weren't they? Well, he's saying they weren't. Being used in the gifts of the Spirit is not being spiritual. <laughs> being able to choose between the flesh and the Spirit is being spiritual. When you choose the Spirit, you're spiritual because you yield to the Spirit. And Paul said, if you don't do that, you can't please God. He said, it's impossible. It says you're actually an enemy of God. Paul said that in, in Romans 8. He said, you're actually an enemy of God if you yield to the flesh. Because you're working against the Spirit. It says it right there. So if you're in the flesh and you work against a Christian, you're working against God. I just ask Paul when he was Saul. Okay, so you don't want to end up being defaulting to the road of, to Damascus. You don't want to have to go through what you just went through again. But see, Paul had to go through that. He was demasked on Damascus Road. But it didn't have to happen that way, right? So, yeah, you, if you had what Paul had happened, you'd probably be on Sid Roth. But is that the way you want to end? Is that the way you want to end up that way, on on the show like that, or do you want to have a testimony that I obeyed God all my life, and no one ever recognized me? I never wrote a book, never got on TV, but I obeyed God, and I changed my environment, and, and people are changed and going to heaven because I obey God. You might not ever have a TV show, but see, the Lord the Lord said to me that from now on. Warrior notes will be coming to the people. You, you come into their house, you come into their phone, and you make it. And this is what Jesus, Jesus, when he appeared to me, he said, your whole ministry, and this was, this was years ago, he said, everything you do now, you own everything. You own it all. Everything, you own it all. Debt-free, and you own everything. You own your own publishing company. You own your own school. You own your own home school. You own your, your own transportation Everything is paid for and is owned. And he said, you make it so that a 15-year-old, this is what Jesus told me. He said, you make your ministry so that a 15-year-old can get to all 39 of your departments on his phone while he's on a skateboard on the sidewalk. That's what he said to me, right? Am I right? And I, this was years ago. I told him that this is how we're going to do the ministry. Kathy and I were living out of our garage. We, we were warrior notes. We packed the books. We wrote the books. We packed them. FedEx came and picked them up. We flew Southwest Airlines, received the books at where we were going to speak. Kathy ran the table, and I spoke. We packed it up. And we, we tried to beat FedEx home. With the, and it, we, we received our books back at our house and put them back in our garage. That was, that was the ministry. But the Lord said, this is going to be ministry from now on. Well, at the time, it, it was like totally different than what people were doing. But see, the need came where people couldn't go out. They couldn't meet. They couldn't, you know. And, and then all of a sudden, our school in three years went to 26,000. Okay, why? Because all we're doing is meeting the needs of the people. That's what the Lord said, just meet the needs of the people. Go to them and make it easy, like a, a, like a teenager on a skateboard. 
and make it so that when you do your courses, it remembers where you left off. And then when you open it up again, it's right there where you left off. You know, and then make it easy, a PDF, make it 10 questions, make them easy, but let them get the principles. And so everything that I do is based on getting you a little further today than you were yesterday. Baby steps, just bite-size everything. If you don't, if you can't afford a book and you want one, you go back and you get it. You just tell them, my book table, uh, all my staff knows. If you can't, if you, if you want a book and you can't afford one, then just go take it. I'm still gonna burn gas today, extra gas. I'm gonna go really fast. It's not gonna bother me. Oh, you know, I gave away books. I gotta pull it back. I gotta, you know, I gotta make that up somehow. No, no you gotta get out of that mentality. That's what I wanna talk to you about this morning. That was my introduction. I wanna show you that your mind, will, and emotions, that your mind, will, and emotions are supposed to be servants to your spirit. And they were given so that a spiritual person could enjoy the extra added environment of, of, of enjoying the spirit in this realm. Because these, this realm is split off from the spirit realm, but it used to not be like that. So the, your mind, will, and emotions used to be able to side with your spirit and enjoy. It gave greater enjoyment to what God was doing. So Adam and Eve were able to enjoy in the soul realm. Was this something I said? <laughs> but I hope so. I hope it was something I said. No, the, the, the soul, the, the, your will and your emotions, they weren't supposed to be the boss. They were supposed, they were given to bring extra added dimensions to what the, the Lord was saying and doing in your life. And so Adam and Eve, they were never slaves to how they felt or even what they thought. They weren't slaves to that. They were innocent. They, it was an extra added dimension. It was never meant to be ruled. You weren't supposed to be hijacked by what you thought or what you felt. You weren't supposed to judge your worth by how you felt ever. And so I, I, I thought you'd want to know this because this is the stuff I saw in heaven that, that people, that people uh, either don't want to know or they do want to know. And, but the thing of it is, is that you're going to have to change after this message for sure. If you haven't been able to change it over all the other thousands of messages I've given, <laughs> you will change today because the Lord, the Lord designed us to be able to enjoy life. And... He never meant for our bodies to rule us, and he never meant for our mind, will, and emotions to, to uh, rule us. If you look, all the emphasis today in the world system is to build you up physically, not your immune system, of course, because that, then you wouldn't need drugs. But everything else, you know, you're, it's your physical appearance that matters. And it's also your state of mind. They, 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 they say, well, we're not really influencing people because they can do what they want. But they are because they understand the science behind this. And see, I know this because I was well-versed in all this. And I understand the intelligence field. So I know exactly what they're doing. So it, you are affected, and, and, and if you want, it, it, you know, like, like a, you have all these things that, you know, you, I wonder if I'm really being affected by, you know, those, those Gs. You know, one was okay, two was okay, but, you know, it's starting to be like, okay. No, I know when I pull five Gs, my head, which is 12 pounds, weighs five times that, 60 pounds at five Gs. I'm talking in code. Well, that's a big head. My helmet's like pressed against the windshield or the side of the canopy at five Gs or back 
I can't move it, 60 pounds. 1G, 2Gs, 1G is, you know, is where we're at right now, 1G. Two is double that. Well, why don't you, why don't you give your phone a rest? Why don't you turn it off and put it really, really deep and far away and then see if it's affecting you or not. <laughs> see if you can sleep better if it's not on your nightstand. Hey, I'm just saying. You wonder like, okay, what, what is affecting me and what is not? Well, go on a diet with everything that you, and, and find out for yourself what is really bothering you. I mean, is macaroni and cheese affecting you? Well, we're going to find out. I'm telling you this because you're, the condition that you're in could be because it's a product of your environment. And you will never know until you, for yourself, start to investigate and find out. So if you want to know if certain things are affecting you, including the demonic, well then you start to do your own investigation Start to eliminate things and start to add things and see if things change. Because I suspect that if you feed yourself, and, and you're going to feel ridiculous, but I, I have in my ears all the time what God is saying. I was told that one of the most supernatural books in the Bible is the book of Hebrews. It's so supernatural that nobody knows who wrote it. I was told, if I told you who told me this, you know, you'd be like, okay. But see, it shouldn't be that way. I was told that Genesis is the most supernatural book. You want to know why? Because it was dictated to Moses, who wasn't alive at the time, was dictated to Moses on the mountain, word for word. It is supernatural because it was given by angels to Moses on the mount. Hebrews, they don't know who wrote it. It is so supernatural that I listen to it before I come and preach. And I quote it out of my mouth as I'm listening to it. And all of a sudden as I'm preaching, I'm, 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 in, I'm entering the new and living way. The veil has been torn. And Jesus has paved a way for me into the Holy of Holies that I can go in there. And, and, and if I can... If I can last any further than that before I come out here to speak, I try to bear it to get to, to chapter 5, chapter 6. But it's hard to do. I listen to it all the time. And what will happen is, is at a certain point, you'll realize that you are not living up to your potential because your environment is dictating who you are instead of what's inside of you. And that's why you need to transform your mind. And you have to do that by discipline. Well, that, that's when everybody bails and goes, goes to the restaurant at this time in the service. You start talking about discipline. You start talking about false doctrine. You start talking about false thinking. You start talking about, uh, you know, who, who's going to be brave enough to stand up and say, we're wrong and we're doing it wrong. It's not working. Right? Okay, so there's, there it is, okay. All right, so 1 Thessalonians 5.23, listen to me. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may God of the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, 
which is pneuma in Greek, and your body, soul, which is the word that you get for psychology, which is a totally different word. So you have suke, you have spirito, and then you have the body, which is sarx. Three different words, three different parts. What is so hard about that, and why do people spit fire about this? Please do not write me, by the way. Thank you. All right. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. Now, if there wasn't three parts, why would Paul say that? And why, in Greek, when you look them up, there are different numbers and strongs, and why, why did he say that? Because there are three parts to us. Okay? And I found, you know, because this started, this started at the, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess once you get past 60, you just, you don't care anymore. At the Assemblies of God College, I used to hide all this stuff, but it's like the professors there, they, they had professors there that, that, oh, that said, well, it's unscriptural. There's only two parts to man. It's your, your either spirit or your body. And um, this is what I, I noticed. And I noticed this about, because when you, you start to talk, you start to talk, you know, all your favorite ministers, you start to, to listen to what they're saying. And, you, and, you, and then you, you, you notice they don't talk about the Trinity. And then they don't talk about the three parts to man either. And there's all this doctrinal stuff about the Trinity and about three parts or how, what, what man, man is made up of. And this is what happens. The whole thing comes down to this when you listen is it conveniently, when you eliminate the soul part of you, it conveniently does two things. It eliminates the fact that the devil can influence a Christian and even grab parts of them. Okay, listen to me. I've been doing this 42 years. I listen to people. Satan cannot possess a Christian in his spirit. They're, they're, it's impossible. It's impossible because they're new creation. There's, old things have passed away. There's no way... A evil spirit can get into a Christian spirit. However, it, it's, I noticed that when people, and there, there are people you wouldn't believe who you love and believe this way. When you eliminate the Trinity, then you have to start taking out parts of the Bible. And when you eliminate the three parts of man, then what it does is it does, it does a couple of things. It causes you to not have any responsibility about the demonic. It eliminates the fact that, well, Christians can't be possessed. You know, he's under our feet. And you're looking at them and like, well, he's not under your feet. He's, he's actually your friend standing beside you. And he's got your ear. He's got your emotions. You're not, he's not under your feet. Well, he's defeated. He's a toothless lion. It's like, where does it say that in the Bible? He's not a toothless lion. He's a lion that's seeking whom he may devour. Are, are you edible? Do you get it? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. Because see, this, this, is, this, this is where we need to grow up today because the problem is, is that we let stuff happen because Satan is a toothless lion and he's just going to gum you to death is what I was told. It's like, well, you know, that's not, the, that's not the evil spirits I've met. They desire to have me. Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to have you, but I have prayed for you. He didn't say I knocked his teeth out. Where does it say that he knocked his teeth out? He's as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. If you, if you don't label your enemy as being vicious, a, steal, a killer... Stealing, killing, and destroying. If you don't label him that way, 
he's already got you. If you don't think that he can talk through you and, and make, get, make you a guided missile, then Peter needs to teach you a class. We're, none of us are exempt except we have to actively manage our souls. We are to renew our minds. It doesn't say God's going to renew our minds. So the onslaught against a Christian is we take away the part that Satan can enter into. We take that away. How convenient. And then we let God renew our minds. It's his job. It, it, Paul said we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. We need to renew our minds. We need to create the atmosphere of heaven all the time. Uh, and it, it, sh it should be so that God at any one moment can hijack your, your life and what you have planned and just do his thing through you and you don't have any resistance to it. Just like the evil spirits do to people now. They just hijack people with your emotions. I mean, somebody looks at you wrong and you know, you go into a tailspin. This is not, this is not soldier mentality. This is not like what Paul said, that we as Christians are supposed to, to not be entangled with civilian affairs. So, so that, that a soldier doesn't entangle himself with civilian affairs. He's talking about a Christian. So what's happened is we have snowflake Christians and you have one degree change in temperature and they start melting. <laughs> they fold. Listen up. I didn't choose the color of my skin. I'm not apologizing for it. And you shouldn't either, no matter what color you are. Amen. Not that I notice. To tell you the truth, it just has to do with the pigment of the dirt where you were formed. <laughs> do you think God was thinking about all this stuff when he, he breathed into the dirt and made man? Do you, do you, think, do you think, like, he's like, you got to be kidding. They're arguing about that? All he did was go like this. Poor Adam. I mean, in his, his name is Adam. Ah, the Aleph is the short name of God. Dom is obviously blood. Dom in Hebrew is blood. Ah, Dom, God blood. So how did it get about the pigment of our skin? And where we were born or not born? And we're arguing if the earth is round or not. <laughs> I thought Christopher Columbus took care of that in 1492. And now we don't know what gender we are. And when we ask somebody what they say, we're not a biologist. Well, what is happening? Is, is the word, is, is, so it, poor God, everything else in your telescope is round, but poor earth, it's a pizza, it's flat. <laughs> Just hope that I end up in a country that, where the pepperoni and the extra cheese is. Amen. No, think about how ridiculous this is. I'm not apologizing for how God made me. Because I was made in the image of God. It was dirt. I'm going to return back to that dirt again. But the real me is going to live forever. So I have a spirit. I live forever. I have a soul, which is my mind, will, and emotions. A lot of that didn't make it. When I went with, to be with the Lord, a lot of that didn't make it. I still had my mind, will, and emotions, but I'm embarrassed to say how much was really valid. <laughs> you, and I'm telling you this because you're going to find us out. You're going to laugh on that day when you see the Lord because you're going to realize that, that only what was transformed goes with you. And you start right where you ended down here and you're going to be so upset because you had a chance to get ahead down here because this is your proving ground for your promotion for the next life. You 
right now are in, in, in training. And this is your probation period. Now, that, you, know, you, you know, you can take it or leave it. I couldn't make a mistake because the Lord's just within three feet of me. So I know I didn't misunderstand what he said. He said, you're down here qualifying for your next position with me in eternity. Uh, he said, I was on probation. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I cannot fail, but I don't want to have to go to class for eternity. But some of you are going to be like, I wish I would have been more diligent more, and studied more and done more for others. You know, you know, think about the mentality of dying and getting another chance. And knowing that I really messed up, but I get another chance at how many people get that opportunity. So you, you wonder why I have 12 tables back there in five years. It's because I got it. I can't fail. And I'm not going to spend my Saturday morning watching cartoons because that's not even neutral because Yosemite Sam has an attitude anyway. And Daffy Duck needs to get delivered because he's so into himself. Bugs Bunny's doing okay. He just kind of like, you know, whatever. He's sure of himself. Daffy's trying to prove himself all the time, like some of you. How's that working? Okay, so if you had a chance to come back and you saw that you cannot fail and that everything in this life is for God and for other people, then then it would change the way you spend your time. Okay, so your mind, will, and emotions are valid, and your soul is a valid part of you. And it is, according to the Bible, if you want to bring the Bible into it, it is the ground where Satan creates warfare. As it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, if you read those first seven verses, you see that the weapons of our warfare are carnal, but they're mighty through God to plant on strongholds. And it, it says that it comes against any high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing in captivity every thought. That's suke. That's the mind, will, and emotions. That's not the spirit. And then in Galatians, Paul said, here's the works of the flesh. And he lists witchcraft as being one of them. Well, I thought witchcraft was spiritual. Well, see, this is why we're ineffective. We don't understand ourselves. We don't understand how it's all laid out. And because of that, we don't, we don't take care of all of us. See, you need, you need to be able to go and do something else and release yourself from the spirit realm. But it shouldn't be carnal to where you're, you're, you're infringing on someone else's rights. You, you know, you shouldn't, ha you shouldn't, like, I'm gonna go flesh out. Yeah, but the thing, the thing of it is, is while you're fleshing out, are you gonna offend another Christian brother who's weaker in their faith? That's why Paul said, listen, you know that, that all that food, all those, that meat at the meat market that's half price, it was half price. It was sacrificed to idols. They put it on the altar uh, for the idols, and then they took it off after it was offered, and it was half price. There was nothing wrong with it. So Paul said, listen, there is nothing evil about that. It is clean if you sanctify it with prayer. But he said, so that you don't offend a weaker brother, if they ask you, was this offered to idols? He says, you got to tell them because of their weak faith. Even though he said, you're strong and it's not going to bother you. See, nobody wants to hear this stuff. Look at all, look at all of you. You're like, no, think about it. I mean, if Buddha doesn't want to eat that steak, I will. Okay. But think about it. That was offered to an idol. That's got cooties. 
You know, the evil spirits are going to fall that meat home. It's not not in the grill that Pastor Mike has. <laughs> Pastor Mike's grill will cook that to where the demons will scream and leave. Okay, now this goes for everything else in the soul realm. I'm talking about the soul realm, but this is the battlefield. Come on, all you ministers in here, you know what I'm saying. You, you know, what you're dealing with in your congregations is not spiritual like you think. It's, it's flesh and blood people that have wrong ideas. Not only is it a bad position, but they're pushing it. And they're, they're pushing their bad position to where it becomes doctrine in the congregation. So the pastors have to deal with it. Why? Because they're shepherds. They notice that that sheep is really a wolf. And it's infiltrated the flock. And passing around wrong ideas, which Paul called false doctrine. So, so you have this idea that's not even right. So if Satan can parade himself as an angel of light, then you've got to be careful about what you hear. Okay, so this is getting interesting. I think I'm going to keep doing, going here. How are we doing? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Um, this is chapter 7, by the way, in your study guide. If you want to be proper. Okay. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. Okay, at what point do we let go of these things? Well, if, if leadership is allowing you to be, remain a baby then, then um, no one gets delivered. No one grows. If, if somebody doesn't say, listen, if what you believe is so right, why haven't you changed? It, you don't believe in deliverance, but you need deliverance. And because you don't believe in it, you never change. So this is, this is the question, like, like in college, Lester Summerall was asked, can a Christian have a devil? And he goes, no, the question should be, if there's a devil present, it needs to be cast out. Next question. Well, you know what the Lord said to me? He said, the question is, can, not, is, uh, can a Christian have a devil? Can a devil have a Christian? That's what he told me. So that's my question to you. Can the devil have you? Have you given him anything that he can have you with, because that's what Jesus said. He said, the evil one's coming. You know, I dealt with him in the desert, and he's coming, but he has nothing in me. And in, in Greek, it says, there's no place for a flesh hook to hook me. The devil has no place to hook me in my flesh. Does everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, can I go on? Okay. All right, so Paul's saying, listen, you know, It's time to put away our childish ways and mature. It doesn't take much to grow up. What it means is, is it stops being a fantasy because as a child, you fantasize about growing up. It stops being a fantasy. Are you ready? At the age of accountability. So, you know, you want to grow up, you want to be an adult, all you kids? Okay, well, you're paying the mortgage next month. <laughs> you know all those light switches you leave on that aren't LEDs? You're going to pay the electric bill. Because it doesn't seem to me you're not cleaning your room, you haven't done all your chores, and so let's just let you pay the mortgage for the month. And all those lights you leave on, you know, and that's, it's, that dial is spinning out there, the electric company is like, oh, we're going to give them an extra Christmas card this year because they're like, they want to, we're, they're, we're supporting the electric company. Well, all of a sudden, when they got to pay the electric bill, yeah. all the switches go off. Unless it's LED and then it doesn't matter. 
But it's the same way with the tires on, on the car. My dad says, you can drive anytime you want. Just go ahead and buy your own car. <laughs> and he said, and you're, and you're going to buy your own tires. So you can just peel out all you want. <laughs> That's what he said. And he said, and he told me since I was 14 years old, he said, at 18, you and that tapeworm are out. <laughs> I would eat all the time. So at 18, I paid rent and I paid for food. I got a revelation. It's time to go to college. <laughs> I mean, what, the eagle, every, all, all the animals do that. They make the bed uncomfortable. It's time to go. You, you should see, when we were in Seattle, we had a house, and right up above us was an eagle's nest. And we, we, every year, you had two or three eagles, baby eagles. And um, they were just really cute and, and fuzzy. And then they, they started to mature and... You could see them come out and flap their wings and they just want to be like mom and dad. And then that one day, you know, dad comes in and takes them and you could see them up there soaring and just circling around our house up to where they were just little black spots, you know. And then one day, one day, they came back and um, he wouldn't let them in the nest. So they, they would sit over on the other side on the, another tree crying all night. Dear Lord. <laughs> Because it was time. It was time to pay the bills yourself. <laughs> See, because it has to happen. And I think, I think that by default, that's what's happening now in the body. Is we're being put in a position where we have to intercede. We have to believe. We have to mature. Lip it up. And, um, you know, when the elevator breaks, we just go to the stairs. We don't, like, sit there and complain and call the elevator company. We just, we got we to gotta do what we got to do, you know. And we, we learn to just kind of like, you know, okay, hey, you want a piece of me, devil? Okay. Well, that's going to cost you. And you just, you go, you just keep going. Say, well, you know what? Then, then I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it another way. But, but the Lord told me to do it, so this is, this is what's going to happen. It's got to get to that place where no matter what, we're mission ready, but we're also able at our own expense to accomplish the mission if it has to be that way. Amen. Can you do that? Can you go back to work if you had to just to do what God told you to do? Can you do that? Can you, can you like go backwards and, and work let people mistreat you again? Can you do it? No. I know parents who would do that for their kids. I know grandparents right now that are working for their kids who are living with them that don't have jobs. I know grandparents that do stuff, they sacrifice every month so that their grandchildren can have what their parents, which is their daughters and sons, cannot provide for them. The grandparents are stepping in. You are all in this boat, okay? So why wouldn't God want to do that for us? Why couldn't you grasp that? I'll tell you why, because your mind needs to be renewed. God would, my father, your father, has done so much for us, has worked this amazing salvation, beat the living daylights out of the devil, made us show them openly, and all he asks is that you believe. But it's hard to believe for a miracle when your mind is not siding with it. And when your body is screaming in pain, it's really hard when people mistreat you to feel like you're royalty. But you are. Now, I know this because, you know, our head intercessor was Ryan's mom. Her, her whole job was to sit and pray for all of you every day 
and I paid her for it. She had a laptop and she answered prayer requests and she prayed over all the students. She prayed over everyone. And the devil took her out. And she was, she was, on, she was on her way out. And so I, I, I mentioned it to someone you would know. I said, well, we got to pray. So right in the garage, we prayed. So I got a call Monday morning, and, it, and it's her. She, she's back. And she said, I got to tell you what happened. She said, I, I was, I was, I was, she, she thought she was dead. She was before Jesus, and Jesus said, you can't come, you can't come yet. And she said, Kevin and Jesse and Tony Kemp will not let you come. <laughs> right? Am I right? But she didn't know that we, she didn't know that. We just agreed in prayer, in the garage, in jeans. We were in jeans. We didn't even, wasn't even in church clothes. Well, these are like that matters. Okay, so then she, I don't know, it was not that long, like a month or two. Yeah. She called me again. She goes, I am tired and I'm, I, I don't know if I can fight much longer. And I said, well, listen. I said, you know, the Lord sent you back and I need you here. But I said, you know what? I said, you just, you just work it out with the Lord. So I get another call from her. It's the last call that I had from her because she passed away. But this is what she did. She called me and she said, I just want to know, I just want you to know how much I love you. She said, I'm telling you. She had the fire of God on her. She said, she said, I just want you to know, you never, ever back off. Do you hear me? You never back off. Do you realize how many people you're helping? You never back off. Don't ever back off the prophetic. She said, I love you. And that was the last I had a talk with her. She passed away that, that next week. Okay. This happened to my father too. He had cancer. The same person, Jesse. I, I asked you, you don't, you might, you probably don't even like him, but you know what? I know where to go when I need prayer. He got, my dad got healed. A couple months later, my dad calls me and he's, he's fine. And he says, I just want you to know, Kevin, that I'm your number one supporter. He said, you've changed my life. He used to beat me daily. He said, you changed my life. He said, I see Jesus in you, and I know there is a God, and I have faith because of you. He says, but I want you to know, you never back off. You never stop. He said, you have no idea how many people you're helping all over the world. That was the last I talked to him. He went into a coma and died. I never got to talk to him again. Okay, so there are people on the other side, like his mom that believes and spoke from this realm to me. But now they speak from heaven in the cloud of witnesses and they're cheering us on. And there are so many in, the, in your Bible that are cheering us on. They're saying, listen, you can do this. You can, you can do this. We did it. You can do it. See, Paul said we have a one family. It's, it's the family on heaven and on earth that together as one, we form the family of God. Yes. And they're all up there knowing the truth. And I experienced that and was sent back. So you have to understand that I understand what the soul has to do with this life. And how if you do not make choices, it's a losing battle.
if you do not make the right choices. You cannot wait for others to do it for you. You have to make the choices. So you eliminate things that you suspect and, and you, you, you either credit or discredit the conspiracy. So, so there's certain things, just like you have stories, I have stories of these kind of discoveries. And I, 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 when I came back, I, I confided in my wife, I confided in my staff. Like I told Ryan, when I met him on October 6th in, 19, in 2016, it was on his birthday, it was my spiritual birthday. He was the producer for the show that I was doing when I was launched. It, 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 it was played on all Christian TV within a few months in January of 2017. I, he asked me, he asked me, well, what did you see on the other side about the demonic? And I said, well, you know all those conspiracy theories? I said, most of them are true. That's what I told him, right? Did I say that? I said, that's why people shouldn't ask me because I'll tell them that it's diabolical what's going on behind the scenes. And you just see these little things and then, then um, you're told nothing here, keep walking. So it's up to you to eliminate the conspiracy and either credit or discredit it. If something is bothering you, you need to investigate what's really going on. You need to give your phone a vacation. So if I go up there to my pulpit right now and I say, boy, I would like to have a st stair master well, by the time I get to my room, there will be advertisements. It happens all the time. I'm like, Kathy, what do you, Kathy, how did, how did you know that I was looking at this massager for my feet? She goes, I don't. But I mentioned it in a conversation. But is it just a conspiracy? Well, find out. Give your phone a vacation. Wrap it in foil and give it to an alien. <laughs> and tell them to take it, take it to Pluto, which isn't even a planet anymore. I, no way, I heard it's reinstated now. But you know, it's round, so. <laughs> Poor Earth, it's a pizza in the sky. Oh, I'm gonna get mail. Don't even write me. Don't even write me. Poor God, you know, everything else is round, but the Earth's a pizza. The earth's flat. you got to be kidding me. You just buy a telescope. You can, for 69, what? Wow. Okay, $69. $69, <laughs> you can buy a telescope. Get the Barlow lens two times, multiply by twice, and just look at the moon and look at Mars, look at Saturn. Poor earth. <laughs> You know, it all has to do with rotation and gravity. It's a science lesson. It has to have, seek, you know, every, every object seeks equilibrium when it's spinning. And that's why you get what you get. It's not a pizza. Okay. Yeah, ready then. Now I've offended everybody. Now we can get it. We can get it. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For the one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. For no one understands him or catches his meaning, but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, which are secret truths, hidden things, and not the obvious in your understanding. This is amplified. Okay, this is the part of you that does the God's business. When you pray in the Spirit, when you yield to the Spirit, you're doing God's business. Now, if you notice 
I go in and out and I appeal to your soul to get you to laugh and then I bring you right back in. See, I do that because I understand. I'm, I'm, I mean, I sat where you did. I understand. I understand that people are critical and I understand that they're, they're doubting and they, I understand it gets intense in here. And so if I can get you to laugh and get you to throw a little science in there, a little pizza, you know, here and there, <laughs> that it, 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 but then we got to go right back in. See, the thing of it is, is that in order to read this scripture here, this is talking about the real you and operating in the power and the, re the resurrection of God. And, and, and this is the real you. So when you pray in tongues, you, you don't know what you're praying. Because you're not talking to people, you're talking to God. God has hijacked your tongue. You're speaking from the Spirit, spiritual things. It says that your mind is not comprehended. It's not fruitful. Do you understand me? Okay, so you can go, you know, you could be a, a, a Hollywood actor, actress, and go, go to a witch and get voodoo done on you, and you, you know, it's okay to do all these things, but a Christian can't pray in tongues? All of a sudden, it's amazing. Like, there, there's no problem with you going and getting your palm read. I can read your palm. I just say, you just need lotion. <laughs> you know, like, no, in other words, why is it so wrong to do spiritual things for God, but it's okay to go to a witch and, you know, look at the stars and... and... So this, this is the real you. This is how we operate. The... The, you know all this stuff. Uh, who wrote this? Oh, that was me. Okay. Okay. okay, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Let us therefore make every effort. This is how we finish it. Listen, listen to the, It says, therefore, make every effort to enter into the rest of God and experience it for ourselves, not hear about it at story time through your favorite minister. You're supposed to have experiential knowledge. You're supposed to be encountering him all the time, all the time. But because we have made choices, because we're not sure if it's a conspiracy or if it's true, we have controversies in our mind if it's really true or not and if it's working or not. Well, let me tell you something. Trust me. Trust me. The things I've seen in the spirit that I've literally been there. I've seen creatures that are in your favorite movies. And I'm thinking, how did they know to replicate that territorial spirit? I even know their name. I'm like, how did they get it so right? Because Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. And when you get to heaven, you're going to find this out because I'm not allowed to tell you now. But what I saw in heaven, I said, that's what that verse means. There's nothing new under the sun. In other words, Satan has hijacked the creation of God. And, and he, he has perverted it. He doesn't, he's not a creator. He has to inject his own messenger RNA. He has to do something to alter what is already made. That's why the word iniquity is used that was found in him. You were perfect until iniquity was found in you. Iniquity means twisted. It's taking truth and twisting it. This is what the devil did to Eve and Adam in that order. Okay, so that no one will fall by following the same example of disobedience as those who died in the wilderness. Okay, so he's tying, Hebrews, the author, is tying the Old Testament as a New Testament thing. He's bringing the Old Testament into the New Testament and saying, don't be like them who fell in the desert because they didn't enter into the rest. 
tell us more. Okay, four, the word of God is living and active. Wait a minute. I thought he was talking about falling in the desert because we didn't enter into the rest. This is the central truth to what we're talking about with our mind, will, and emotions is that for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit. So it must be a hard thing to divide between the soul and the spirit. But it's not impossible. But the only place in the Bible that, that it says that, that, that the soul can be divided from the spirit is through the word of God, which is also interchanged with the spirit of God, the sword of the spirit. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, can penetrate and divide between soul and spirit. Okay, it's the only thing that can do that. Okay. The Word and the Spirit are the same, according to Scripture anyway. It's the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, okay? Okay, only the sword and the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, can divide between... It's the only thing that can divide between the soul and the Spirit, okay? All right, now, hold on, okay. So... You have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can pray in the Spirit, okay? Which means it overrides your mind and your will and your emotions. It, it, it causes a direct line bypassing your mind, will, and emotions. And you are talking directly to God. And the same Spirit that is praying through you is the only one who can divide between your soul and your spirit. What a great deal. Okay, so you understand why Paul said, I, I pray in tongues and more than you all. And he was an apostle. There's no way that we could ever be, to me, I, I don't know. I don't think anybody can be like Paul. I don't think, I don't even know if, if, if anybody could ever have the rank of Paul, even if they call themselves an apostle. I don't think that, I think that those, those certain individuals built the foundation of the church. I, I, I'm, I mean, I can't be Enoch or Elijah, but it was the law and the prophets and the apostles that built. And now at the end of this age, we're, we're the ornamentation so the Old Testament prophet, the New Testament prophet doesn't have the function of the Old Testament prophet. That goes over well. So the New Testament prophet, when they speak, they speak from the realm of igniting faith. In the New Testament, everything is by faith. In other words, Paul said, you know those prophecies that I gave you, Timothy? He said, you got to take those and wage war with them. Well, what if Timothy didn't? Well, obviously he wasn't because they hadn't come to pass. So Paul speaks the will of God prophetically, but it has to be mixed with faith. What well, faith is really an act. Faith is action. I mean, if you want to bring Pastor James into it, you wouldn't want him coming to your church because he says, you show me your faith by what you do. Well, that goes over well. You know, and I'm sure, I'm sure he didn't get big offerings, James. Because Paul said, I'm gathering all of these offerings that I'm taking. I'm taking them to the church in Jerusalem, which James was the pastor of. Okay, so the Spirit and the Word agree. They are... They are one and the same, two separate, but one. The Word is Jesus, the Spirit is the Spirit. But the Word and the Spirit agree, and it's a sword that divides between your soul and the Spirit. So your mind, will, and emotions can be divided away from your Spirit. And... 
you need to decide if it's a conspiracy within yourself. Because Paul said there are people that oppose themselves within themselves. How can you oppose yourself? I hope you win. Well, who's going to win? Well, one or the other. Well, wait a minute. Well, if you can have an argument with yourself, then there has to be some sort of division. Okay, if you're fighting yourself, the devil's already won. Which is why I'm preaching on this this morning. Because the Spirit is saying some things to you. But what he's saying is way beyond what, what you could handle in your mind. So that's why you need to yield to the Spirit and pray in the Spirit always. Be diligent to pray in the Spirit, and this is how I do it. I put apart a, a certain time where I just pray in tongues. My mind, my will, and my emotions are not invited. Either is anything physical from the outside allowed in while I do this, because this is a sacred time where I'm, I'm on the phone with God, and I don't want any interruptions because no one, no one, did I mention no one, has any priority over God talking to me? No one. So if somebody is going to come and inject themselves with words or anything when I'm on the phone with God, they are infiltrating a sacred thing because that's my time. So when I pray in the Spirit, my mind is not cooperating with me. My emotions certainly aren't. Now, you do this right now. I guarantee you. Like right now, I, just, I was, I was going to say this. I'm going to pray in tongues. You know what happened? I thought of chicken strips. <laughs> right? I did. I'm, now I'm hungry. My mouth is salivating right now. I'm telling you. What, what happens is, 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 as soon as you want to engage in spiritual activity, automatically those that do not participate in that, which is your mind, will, and your emotions, and your body, they're, they're going to throw a fit right in the grocery store in front of everybody, just like your child does. See, a child is going to get attention, whether it's positive or negative. They just want attention, and they know how to do it. If they don't get their way, they'll use the crowd. They'll leverage the crowd. So you, you have to seal it up and let's, let's be mature. You want to be spiritual? Because you need to be spiritual. Because trust me, everyone around you is not going to do this for you. And certainly our government is not going to do it for you. You want a diagnosis? I'll give you one. You're coming down with a healing right now. Amen. You're walking out of poverty. Yes. Your relationships are going to be healed or they're going to be cut. Amen. There, there is a clear clarion call to the body of Christ to stand out and be separate, be separate among. And it, and, and it means that if you set your body apart, then it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your mind, will, and emotions are supposed to be used for you to enjoy this life. But it's a spiritual life, but you have input in this realm. But you need to control what that input is. I don't want to do that, Lord. I will do it, though. I, I used to, because we were poor, and I, 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 I don't know how we made it. When I got my job at Southwest Airlines, in, in the first quarter of the year, I made more than my dad made in a whole year. I always ate better. But I left everything to go follow God, just like Abraham did. And yet by chapter 13 of Genesis, after he had left, just a couple chapters before, he left everything. He was very rich. It says he was very rich. I can't say that in church, but we're not in church here. 
So he was very rich. And then his son, Isaac, he was smart enough to, to be like his dad. He sowed during famine and reaped a hundredfold that year. And the Philistines were so mad that they stopped up. It says they stopped up his father's wells. Why? Because they didn't get, they didn't get the crops. So they were mad at someone who had prospered. So I'm just going to tell you right now, the reason why we do without is because we don't open the treasure chest that's inside of us. It's spiritual. You pray in the spirit and you, you, you contend for your kids. You contend for your, your wife or your husband. You contend for them. And you, you say, you know, you did, this is what I do. When I pray for people, I go, get them, God. Get them, get them, get them, get them. I go, don't let them sleep. Give them good dreams, but then have them wake up. Let them vibrate in their bed. The power of God. I have had people call me and say, stop praying for me. <laughs> no. And you, you would know who it is. Way bigger than me. I was like, I want the power of God on this person. I want them to finish their race right. The power of God on them. Get them, get them, get them, get them. They call me. Stop praying for me. I can't sleep. Only pray between these hours. <laughs> Am I right, Ryan? <laughs> Why? Because if, you know, if you're a general, you need to finish your race. You need to finish it exactly in the power of God. Okay, so I, I believe this has helped you, and I... I want, you, I want you to know that the Spirit of God is more than willing to put you over. But see, you're going to find out that you are over. Your spirit's doing fine. It really is. Your spirit is doing fine. You just need to give it the preeminence. You need to stir yourself up, wage war with those prophecies you've received. And then Paul said, you know, to Timothy also, he said, you know, the, the gift that was given to you by the laying on of my hands, he said, you need to fan that into flame. See, this is, this is why it, you can't go by the Old Testament prophet. The Old Testament prophet, they were speaking scripture. It was in stone. But even a lot of what they said didn't come to pass because of disobedience. Even Jesus couldn't heal. And you know that he didn't do anything except if the Father sent him. But he was sent to Nazareth, and he couldn't heal anybody of major stuff there because of their unbelief. So even, even the Father sent him, he went everywhere healing everyone that was oppressed of the devil because God was with him. It says everybody that came to him, he healed. But when he went to his own hometown, he could not heal. It was because of their unbelief. So Jeremiah said, I have plans for you, good plans for you to prosper and have an expectedly good end. And what happened in 70 AD? It was destroyed. That city, Jerusalem, was destroyed. But, but God, through Jeremiah, said, I got plans for you, plans for you to prosper and have an expected end. Well, that wasn't the expected end and certainly wasn't World War II and all of those Jew, Jewish people that died. That was not God's perfect will. And there was more like 12 million. Don't ever believe it was just 6 million. It was much more than that. It was not God's will. So in the New Testament, when someone speaks by the Spirit, you judge it, but then you have to wage war with it. And if you have hands laid on you and you have a gift inside of you, you can't just say, well, if God wants me to be in the ministry, he'll put me in. Well, no, he, he's already done the ministry inside of you. Now it's up to you. You're going to find out. You just turn this in and you get an audit. This is what happened to me. I was waiting for God and he was waiting for me. It's embarrassing. Tr trust me. Do not finish like I would have finished. I got sent back. I got a second chance at this. I'm doing it right. I'm not going to throttle back. I actually removed the throttle. I'm not going to step back. And you shouldn't either. But it's got to be spiritual activity where you set yourself apart and you go, no one is going to have this time. I'm talking to God. And you just practice. I do. I practice giving the hand. I can't hear you. (laughs) 
you got to keep it sacred. Your time with the Lord is very important. If you're not filled with the Spirit, you can be filled with the Spirit. Yes. And we'll pray for you. And we'll have the music now, if we do have music. I don't, is the instrument still there? We got, sometimes they pack up, but behind the scenes, they're like, <laughs> as I'm talking, yeah. I'm sorry, do you, do you feel like, okay. All right. Listen, this, this is the most important message that I'll ever preach, ever. This is the core, is, is you cannot take credit for what you see happening at Warrior Notes. You cannot give me credit for it. It is literally birthed in the spirit. Literally just two crazy people, flight attendant and a hairdresser, that just realized, you know what? We were getting hit by the devil. I mean, I, if you come to my house, I mean, you, Brittany, Brittany and Jason have been to my house. Many people have been to my house. They've been in that living room. Brittany couldn't stop crying. As soon as she walked in, the power of God so strong. But what happened in those seats is Kathy and I would pray from 3 a.m. until noon in tongues. And we had no friends, no calls, nothing. And we were getting hit by the devil so bad that we, I could get you all to cry right now if I'd even tell you. And this is what I said. I said, I, you, can, you can ask her. I, I looked across, we're, we're weeping, and I said, you know what, we're getting hit like we're Perry Stone, <laughs> like we're one of the big boys. I said, you know what, we might as well just go all out, because we're getting hit as though we're one of the big boys. That's what I said, you can ask her. And I like Perry Stone, so I just like, I said, you know, we're, the devil is hitting us like we're Perry Stone. And I even have a show named Manifest. So we decided we're going to go all out. And so we prayed in tongues. And we didn't even care anymore how we felt, how we thought. And you know what? For a while it got worse. I felt like there was this battleships just lined up. One would pull out, the next one would come in and just keep going. Then the other one would go reload and come in and take its place. It's just, it was just constant. So I'm, I'm telling you this because I think you need to know that ministers won't tell you. They think, it, you think it's like, you know, but, but I wasn't born in a major with a halo and wise men didn't come visit me. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't have any of that. What I, what I had was, is there a God in Israel? Is there a God on the throne? And I want that God. And I knew there was. I said, so I literally, I literally, I mean, I can do it now. I almost did it. This is what I do. I, I reach down and I take the mantle. This is what I do. I'll tell him to do it right now. I took the, the mantle of Elijah. I went down to the water and I smote it. And I said, where's the God of Elijah? That's what I do. Because if, if everybody else did it and, and succeeded, and I was in heaven and all those people are happy up there and they did their job. So I'm gonna pick it up, whatever it is. I don't care if it's dirty. If some, well, that's what Elisha did. He just picked it up and he, he went down and tested it. He goes, where's the God of Elijah, right? Am I right? And, and that's the word for this morning. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, you want a prophecy? You don't even have to line up here. The Lord is saying, will you believe me one more time and pick up your mantle and go down and strike the water? Because this time it's going to split. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God. Will you do it one more time? Will you, will you pick up what God has placed before you and will you do it one more time for the Lord this time? Because I know it didn't work. It hasn't worked. But this time, the Lord is saying, will you do it one more time for me? Will you say, will you say that the God is good and he's a faithful God and that there are, there are mantles that you can pick up. Those who have gone before us, <laughs> they're they've been faithful and they're cheering us on. My dad is in heaven because I stood my ground and I loved him. When he'd hit me, I'd go, Dad, you can hit me on the other cheek. I love you. I'd go, hit me again. I was bleeding. He punched me. I'd go, hit me again. I love you. And he 
you just like, Ooh. the power of God was so strong I couldn't lift my hands to even protect myself. And at the time, I could pick him up with one hand and hold him by his throat off the ground. That's how big and strong I was. But I wouldn't do it because he's my father. But because the love of God constrained me, I could not lift my arms. So I'm telling you, there is something before every one of you this morning, and I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, I did not plan this. This is not like a really cool sermon that I designed. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, the Lord says, pick it up and go down and say, where is the God? Where is the God of all my forefathers that went before me? Paul is in heaven saying, stir it up, fan it in the flame. If it was in stone as a prophecy, it would have happened already. But it hasn't because in the New Testament, it's based on action. It's based on faith. Faith is an act. If you want to quote Smith Wigglesworth. And, it, and if you have any criticism, whenever you get 37 people raised from the dead, you can come and talk to me about what you don't like about him. Exactly. Right? Yes. Hmm. Praise God. I've got the power of God. So that's what I do when I pray. I pick up those things that were left from the people that left Paul. All these people that, that are wonderful people in heaven. They said, listen, we did our part. We laid the foundation. You are the ornamentation. You're, you're the paint and, and the beautiful tapestry for the building. We're, we're the ones at the end of the age that are doing the finishing touches. We're the finishing touches on God's temple. I know this. The crown molding. Triple crown molding. Triple layer. Beautiful. Like, we're it. Like, they're... There, there is nobody else. We're supposed to be getting it ready for the, for the, the bride, groom coming. Come on now. Come on. So much power in this room. Praying in the Spirit will take you very quickly, directly. You mean there's a button? There's a, t -t today, today, if something happens in my airplane, there's a button. There's a button right down on, on, the, on the screen, the middle screen. If I press that, the nearest airport comes up and it gives me a, if I press it again, it gives me a direct route to that airport. If something happens, the nearest airport is selected by the computer and gives me instructions to get there. Just like that. I'm telling you, that's what the Spirit's doing this morning to, come on, oh, the Spirit's doing it. He's going to give you a direct, come on, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you're so good. Sholo bere drahi o no maera kana. Si se kola bere drahi si tos kishita. Worshiping, if um, if there is anybody here that wants to be filled with the Spirit and get your prayer language and hasn't been yet, we'd love to help you and assist assist the Holy Spirit in helping you make that connection. So if that's you and you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit with that release of uh, prayer language in other tongues, we'd love for you to come forward and we'll help you make that connection. Thank you. Let's go ahead. Anybody forever faithful father you are to us. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit alive inside of us. You guys thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Our divine, our divine escort into greater things, the truth of who you are. Father, thank you for fire. Okay, I'm gonna um, 
I'm going to talk to these folks in in a group, but keep playing. I just don't want to like. No, you're good. You have a strong you're voice. <laughs> so okay. So everybody here, uh, you need to be born again. Is everyone here born again? Okay, but you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Let's slide down just a little bit so we don't get bunched up all over here. I'm just going to say it one time for everybody, and then my friends are going to help us pray. And um, go help her. Come back. Here can be his. Are you his friend? Is your husband? Okay, of course you're friends, but you know how they say phone a friend. You're going to help him. So, um, yeah, you don't have to stay, but anyhow, I just, so it's very simple. It's just like if you or somebody asked you, they said, hey, I want to get born again. And you'd be like, praise the Lord, let's pray, right? It's the same thing. Jesus has already come. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. He's already been poured out. So you all, he's already been poured out. It's God's idea, and he wants you to be filled. So this is the prayer I pray, because the reason I have you repeat it after me, because it kind of, it, if there's any, like, doubt or unbelief, when we pray these prayers, it, our voice overrides any wrong teaching we've had. So you're going to believe everything we're praying, but we're just declaring it, and then it's going to release your spirit, and you're going to get, you're going to have utterance. It's going to come out of your spirit, just like a baby it's going to be sounds like when a baby first starts talking or a, a youngster, it's they've never heard that sound come out of their mouth before, but yet they give it their breath. So it's your breath partnering with the breath of God. So, so okay, so this is the prayer we're going to pray. Okay, so we're going to say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for making a way for the Holy Spirit to come to me. Thank you for your blood on the mercy seat. Thank you, thank you God for sending the Holy Spirit, the breath of heaven to earth. All right, because remember Jesus said, I'm going to pray the Father. So he prayed to the Father that the Spirit would come, but it's his blood on the mercy seat that's made a way. So we're, that's how we can have the Holy Spirit in us is because of the blood of Jesus. So say, Father, fill me now. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. I receive... I receive you, Holy Spirit. Fill me now. I release my tongue. And I breathe out my prayer language now. Shakura shteheshte. Shakura shteheshte. Shakura shteheshte. Shakura shteheshte. Shakura shteheshte. Shukushto shushto. Shusto shushto. Bikiabaste. Ikia baste, ushta bande shte, uja bade beshte, uja bade beshte, ila vianasto, ushta mande shte. Okay, we're gonna stop for a minute. Raise your hand if you felt a new sound come out of your spirit. Okay, you did. Praise the Lord. Okay, just stay up here and keep praying. Okay, okay. So, did you feel anything? Okay. You, you remember, it says, they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. You're all going to get filled, so don't don't worry. I'm just, I take it in baby steps so that you know you can start and stop. You're not, the Holy Spirit's not just going to overtake you. You don't have to be afraid. You're, it's not going to be like this uncontrollable thing. But at the same time, you do have to like at least open your mouth, just like the baby. And it is very foolish. Your mind is likes to be the boss. So it's your mind isn't going to want you to do this. But you trust me. You want to be able to. This is like you're, This is like the best thing. So um, if you want to. Like I know that sometimes they laid hands and the people received. So we've prayed the prayer. And now 
Just say this after me. I repent of doubt and unbelief. I break fear. I break mind control. Put your hand on the belly. Say, ha, ha, ha. He, he, he. Ho, ho, ho. Ha, 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 ha. Joy, 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 joy. Okay, now that same place, that joy, is the same joy where the Spirit is going to give you tongues. It's going to come out of your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we just prime the pump, okay? So we just prime the pump. Now you're ready. Shama tamokoshte. Fire. 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 Shakoto pray. Shalavuta borrababaste. Orrabaste. Pastor Sixto and Susan are going to pray over some, just kind of go down the line and just, just help them. Everybody's ready. They just, sometimes it's just fun to have a friend with you. You can help too, Ray Ray. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead, you guys. So you're going to, you, you got it. He's got it. Shavata Teshe. Can I touch your hand? Fire. Fire. Ha ha. Shakur Rabase. Go, go, shte. Just go for it, my brother. Go for it. Shate, your life is going to turn around. Shakoto, go for it. Be aggressive. Go for it. Open that mouth. Your mouth is anointed. That mouth is anointed to preach the gospel. Shava. Shava. Sheve. Yete. You need this. Shakoto. This is life and death for you. La botokote. Keep going. Feel the joy. Fire, 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 fire. Honey, put your hand on your husband's belly. Fire, fire. Shava hate keshe koto shoto. Orramamase. 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 Horve. Just get comfortable with that flow. What's your name? What's your name? Gene. Gene with a J or a G? Okay. This is going to change your life. That's why I'm taking time with you. So, I want you to get that flow. Shamata makusta korra babaste, orra bababaste, koro vokorra vase, ilaviana tono tono shino korra mama sekete, orra bahashe he she he she, hashe he she. Now take a laugh break. Ha ha ha. Hey hey hey. Oh. <laughs> That's a quick way to prime the pump. <laughs> Keeps things flowing. Shamoto mokorra mama sekari. Do this every day. I promise you, a year from today, you will be in a different place. You're going to redirect your life into God's perfect will. Shava kitave. Father, I thank you for this couple. I thank you for the plan you have for them, that it will stand. The plan of man shall not stand, but your plan shall stand. They shall walk in all the call and fulfill all the destiny that you have written down for them. Holy fire, tongues of fire, fresh fire on the wife fresh fire on the husband new place yeah go for it raise your hands just and in while they while the lady while the team's playing he's good now you guys just go for it worship the lord shabbat toto toshte did you get your your language you came for here friend well she got it you got it pray with me you got it shabor ravase you got it you're there girl go for it shokor ravase you got it Say, I Father, Holy Father, Holy Holy. Say, I have it. I have it. I have it. I pray in tongues now. I pray in tongues now. Let's go. Shavalavote. Let. Open your mouth. Now. Let me tell you something. Don't be afraid. I'm not, but it's not coming. No, but I'm saying it's not coming the way you think it's going to come. I'll tell you something. We'll pray with you more if you want, but like when I was getting filled with the Spirit, I was like, I was like, how's this going to happen? It was like I had so much in my head, you know, and then but this minister came to me and he told me, he started
and he knew how hungry I was, you know, and I was like, I was like, is it going to take me over, or am I going to have to manufacture it? I was between those two extremes. I know, and that was me too. So this is what happened, but it's a partnership, and the scripture that just fell on me, like, just like, just like, all of a sudden, then it clicked for me, was Bye-bye.
Afraid. <laughs> okay, so. 